2012 was, a, it was the, the epitome of Little League Baseball. It was an all-star team that was formed out of every league, and we had one in Cherry Hill. And uh, I was selected to pitch the first game of the all-star game. The first batter, it was 1-2-3, it was fastball, fastball, curveball, and at 12, you didn't throw that many curveballs, but I'll still never forget the feeling, after, and, and the guy didn't touch it, and I'm like, oh, I mean, maybe, maybe it was a shot. Well, this progressed through six innings, cause that's how many innings we played in Little League, and I didn't even realize it was until, I guess the fifth inning, you, you realized, oh, you, you've got a no-no going, and, and it was kind of special. We didn't score a whole lot of runs, too, so every inning was, was important. and. Uh, and we got to pitch a no-hitter in the first game of the uh, All-Star Tournament. I thought that was pretty special. So it was, it was a great feeling. Typically the starters from our senior team were together sophomore, junior, and senior year. So we, we just knew each other. The chemistry was there and the team really gelled. It also was a year that we had come off of a junior year where we won the conference. So we knew we had a taste of it and we knew we needed to back it up. So the bottom line is we did. And every game now wasn't can we do it, is we know we can and we did it. South Carolina, when, I, when you did some research, they either went to Omaha, back to back to back, they drafted three or four pitchers every year, and at, at the end of the day, that's what I wanted to do, is play pro professional baseball. So I went with the odds. And, it, and it, it worked out almost to that end game, but it was a great education, and South Carolina turned out to be a, a wonderful experience. Senior year, again, same thing as it was in senior at East, you, you, you wanted to go back, you wanted to finish out your college career at the epitome of college baseball, which was the College World Series in Omaha, of course, and we, uh, we were not looking good for a while. We had to beat Clemson, which is our arch rival, six times to get a regional bid. And when we got the regional bid, we actually hosted it. And when you host it, you're home, you had a better shot, and lo and behold, we were back in the College World Series in Omaha, and the memories start coming back. And now, since again you're a senior, you want to do better in that tournament than you did as a freshman. And um, Sands one pitch I did uh, because I got a chance to pitch in both games, but uh, it was still a great experience. And the 
Cape Cod League was truly a wonderful experience because it was a invitation only. It was not something you could sign up for, try out for. Basically, you had to be asked. And I got the call from my coach and he said, uh, how would you like to play in the Cape Cod League this summer? And everyone knew you had to be invited by a scout to do that, or several scouts. And that meant that you were on a radar. You were on somebody's screen to make it to the next level. So I said, heck yes, I'm, I'm all in. And to me, it was a chance to really play against the best of the best. And the scouts were at every game, and I got to play in this quaint little town called Hyannis, where the Kennedy compound is. And I actually worked outside the Kennedy compound. They gave you a job during the day, and you played ball every night. And it was the summer. It was, it, it was baseball at its purest. When I didn't make it after that, uh, going to my senior year, we went back to Omaha in the College World Series and I didn't get picked up. That hurt because at, at 22 to be told you were not fast enough or and your fastball was flat at 91 miles an hour. And it, now I know it, it was flat at, at 91 compared to what they're doing now. Um, that was devastating. But looking back now, thank goodness for football, thank goodness for baseball, thank goodness for my family. Thank goodness for athletics in general because uh, it, it drives me and, and that's what keeps me very competitive today. When I received the call that I was uh, accepted into the Hall of Fame for South Jersey, I was actually coming back from the airport, which is a pretty regular occurrence, and uh, it was Coach, Coach Martin. He, he called several times a day. He never called more than once. Uh, and he, he gave me several calls, messages, called me, I, and I thought something was wrong. So as soon as I got my bags in the car and I was headed back home, I, uh, I, I caught him. And he said, started talking about some small talk. He said, hey, by the way, I want to let you know something. Uh, congratulations. Your nomination has been accepted for the Hall of Fame. I was in shock. I, I was. I, I didn't. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. It still. It chokes me up now. Uh, I'm driving along in, in rush hour traffic and um, tearing up, kind of like him now. And and it was an unbelievable experience. I, I, I had to call Sandy, my wife, and I, I. I. I was trying to talk to him, but I. I needed to call Sandy. Uh, so I got off the phone with Coach Martin, and I. I called Sandy, and, and she knew this meant a tremendous amount to me. So, uh, hearing her relation was, was unbelievable. And then calling my my family, my immediate family, and it was it was it was really neat. And to me, it was the biggest thing that ever I could have to be recognized uh, for that. And I never made it. As I said earlier to the, to the big leagues, but they took into account all the sports, and it really was was neat to to be appreciated for that. And, and I was so humbled and felt so blessed. That was the greatest call uh, I received. It was, uh, it was really neat.